So welcome back to this build of a Hudson Hunslet diesel loco in 16mm scale. Um, I've not actually had much chance to do very much since the last video, uh, partly kind of home life, um, family, but also um, turned out my video on the 16mm scale simplex model was really was really popular. So I've had I've spent quite a bit of time printing out parts for the people. So uh, I've not managed to uh, print any new pieces for this either yet. Um, I'll put a, a link up here to that video if you've not seen it um, it's a it's another good video about how I've designed some um, detailing parts for another 60 millimeter scale model anyway um, back to this so we got to the point where I can I can form uh, this shape um, it's now the the right size so when you hold it up against the <coughs> the printed parts um, it's it fits pretty much to the the right length um as i said in the in the last video it's ever so slightly short due to fractional measurements but that's just a, a case of fi filing this edge uh back if if necessary uh depending on how well accurate it's been cut but uh yeah um so the the, th the question now is um on the on the model on the prototype this side isn't um complete it curves around um in fact there are two different versions of this part um, depending on whether um, it was an open or um, cabbed version. I'm going for the open version, um, just it's the one I prefer. Um, I wouldn't get the driver figure in a cabbed version either, I don't think he kind of sticks out the side. Um, <clears throat> so for that, essentially, it kind of comes across, curl, there's a corner here, comes across and down here. Now you remember, might remember I did have a, a printed template originally, uh, when I was trying to form this part, which showed me where to cut it. Problem was, it turned out that that template was the wrong size, hence I made this part too narrow. Well, um, I didn't need the template to make the part wider, but I have now fixed the template. So we now have this. So this is just scaled up correctly now uh, from the 4mm um, scale version. Um, it's not a perfect match to this part, because um, I've just simply scaled it up and the fold lines are specifically sized to take into account the size of the sheet metal you're folding. Um, and if you remember, scaling up the original brass sheet would have meant using one millimeter thick aluminium. We're only using uh, half millimeter, so those aren't quite right. But for the purposes of, of what I want to do, I think it's accurate enough. So essentially my plan is to, um, I mean, you can see if I just fold this over, you can see it's it, it pretty darn close now. Um, if I put that across the top, you can see that red line is where the corner's supposed to be, uh, and that's, that's pretty good. Um, that corner's not quite right, and um, as I said, there's, there's, there's issues. But it, it, it's, it's close enough. Um, it's also close enough, probably, for drilling these two holes. Um, therefore, um, vents that go on the top and again there'll be 3d printed parts that that go through those holes um, and you can kind of line that up quite nicely using the the red lines as the kind of edge of the edge of the part anyway uh, for now <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm essentially gonna stick um, this on um, I'm gonna get that side lined up perfectly um, as I said there's slight variations in how thick I've how well how accurately I've cut the sheet the whole strip um, to be the, the 37 millimeters wide. But anyway, I'm going to glue this on here with some Pritt stick uh, and then cut this piece out um, should leave me uh, the right shape. Uh, I'm not going to try and do it all on camera because I think wielding my tin snips underneath the camera um, is going to be a recipe for disaster. But I'm going to stick it on, um, probably draw once I've got the template on as well. So if the template shifts, I've still got the, the line. Uh, and then cut it out, and then we'll we'll come back, and I'll see we'll see how it how it fits, and possibly try it on the on the model and see what it looks like. So yeah. Right, so that didn't take very long. Um, as I say, I just stuck the sheet on, um, added some um, permanent marker around the edge so that if it if it slipped, I could still see where I was cutting, uh, and then used the tin snips to cut it out. This corner, nice and easy with the tin snips, um, wasn't perfectly round, so just a little bit of filing. Um, this corner, what I did, I just kind of cut to about here with the snips and down to about here with the snips and then just bent it off and then used the round file um, to fill in 
to get this corner. Um, when I was going across here, um, I managed to nick this side, which is a pain, but there we go. Um, you know, this is all, this is going to be remade again anyway at some point. Um, <clears throat> but it does mean now that when I put it on here in the right place um, and it fits, you can see it fits nicely uh, with the little gap here where the side panel fits. Um, it fits nicely up against the, the control panel. Um, it gives you much better shape. So if we if we try and fit it on, let's have a look. Um, so let's have a look. We need to put this bit in here first. There we go, it goes on. Front radiator's on. <clears throat> Top bonnet panel. Right. And there we go, that fits on there nicely. If I turn it round, we can have a look at this side. Um, oops. As I said, this will not be require quite so many fingers um, when it's all glued together, but there you go. Um, yeah, as I say, it's falling apart because of the number of fingers. Uh, but there you go, nicely in place, um, looks the part, um, works perfectly. So, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that um, for how to form it, how to cut it. Um, there is still this issue with the the top bowing when I first form it. I think, actually, I know what's going on there and I know possibly how I might solve it. Um, it will require remaking these and I don't know whether it's worth it for the effort, but I think what's happening is, if you imagine <clears throat> when you've got a flat sheet across here and you push down on it with this, the idea is that the sheet stays flat against the bottom and curls up around the corners. But there's nothing to stop the sheet kind of bowing downwards and I think what's happening as I start to push down the sheet is actually kind of um, instead of making a tight corner crease at either corner it's starting to kind of bow into a u-shape and it's only when I push then against the bottom that that rectifies itself which is why I need to push with a slightly wider part first and then the, the real size one to get it back into shape so I'm thinking that actually what I need to do is have some way of keeping essentially the metal in contact with this flat surface while it starts to bend the folds. So what I might need to do is basically make a mould that essentially um, the, this top piece is in two parts um, that kind of grips and holds um, the sheet so that when I push down the metal can't move away from this bottom plate and curves in the right place and it may mean then I can get away with just one former um, I'm not quite sure the best way of doing it I think what I might need is essentially this central block without the pins and then a piece that goes underneath with the pins um, possibly bigger wider pins and then a bolt in either side so that essentially it um, you put the sheet in, put the bottom on, and then pins in, and it holds it all still. Um, that would obviously mean I'd need to remake the bottom former as well, because I'd probably need to take this central piece out, so that when it drops down, the the bit below the metal has somewhere to go. Um, the problem with that is it would leave a, an edge on either side <coughs> um, that could... could distort the metal. I don't think it would because I wouldn't be pushing down any further than that because I'd make sure it couldn't go below those edges. Um, but I'm not sure, given given that I can get it flat by hand um, and it fits nicely on the part with, you know, all right, you, you kind of have to kind of squish it down while you're gluing it on to get it to fit perfectly. Um, I'm not sure it's worth the, worth the effort. Um, of, of new formers that may or may not work and would be much more complicated to print and assemble. Um, if you have any thoughts, you know, um, please do leave uh, comments. Um, maybe somebody out there has much more experience than me of um, forming sheet metal with this kind of um, tool um, and might have some sensible ideas. Uh, but yeah, so I think, <clears throat> anyway, now I've fixed the template, that's fine. Um, now I've printed out all the parts people um, asked for from for the simplex video um, and get back to reprinting some parts for this um, I still need to test print all the control stuff that fits here and sort out the seat but then also all of this most of what you can see here needs reprinting as I said this is still the the body with the broken um, the broken foot plate um, so 
yeah, it's still going to be a while before we get much further progress, but I think other than the control panel and the seat, all the parts now work. Uh, I don't have any worries about how to print them. I've test printed them. They all kind of come out okay. Um, so I think we're into the kind of home stretch, as it, as it were. Um, but no idea how long that <laughs> stretch will take. We shall see.